All right, guys, so I thought I might as well do a little video for you, especially Grant. Well, maybe more for Chuck, because you're more into it, right, Chuck? Uh, so, yeah, this is my setup. It's temporary, like, I, I don't have a permanent place. The most important thing is the ski form right here, right? Because it has the curve, you get a nice steady uh, scrape on it, you know, all your brushing and everything that's important. Uh, this is my setup. I've had it since I was racing. This uh, toolbox has all my stuff in it. Um, waxes and scrapers. Most of the waxes are down here in my box and all my brushes. I'm going to use two brushes here. But there's also a, a horsehair brush, which is super soft. And you might want to use that one actually now that I think of it. And nylon and brass and brass. Yeah, we'll probably go with that because we're going. Well, we'll go brass because it's a little colder tomorrow morning. All right, so let's do this. I think my iron is on. But before we iron, lack of a rilling tool, I use a, um, especially in the spring, to get structure, I just use a wire brush. And you just typically, you really, if you're, if I was screw, um, waxing for racing like I did 20 years ago, Everything is tip to tail, always. You never go back and forth, right? So I'll just do it really should do it. So I'm just, you know, getting all the old wax out of there and uh, making sure all the bristles, when I scrape the base, I'm ripping up shit, right? And we want it to go like this, so it goes over easier. Want heavy structure for spring skiing, even though tomorrow it's gonna be a minus three, so maybe this is the wrong, Maybe this is wrong, but I'll lay it on the side of I'll lay it on the side of warm, right? So now I I uh, you know opened it up, got the wax up, scotch bright, just just you just wipe that wax off. Right? Now we're ready for the wax. So we're using a CHA Toco wax, um, plus one to minus four. It's a red wax. Now. Warm enough. We don't want a hot iron for this because it's pretty soft wax, but my iron is not hot enough. I have a chart that tells me where it should be, but I think it should be at about 1 at 140 maybe. Alright. So we can start, it'll warm up. So what you want to do, you don't want to drip people drip wax, don't do that. It's called your crayon. So keep your end of your iron over the ski so the drips do one, but just do this and do this. Crayon, crayon that wax on it. And then you get a complete coverage, look at that. And you're using hardly any wax. You rarely will scrape any off because you're just not using a ton. So make sure you're getting wax on it. All right, the thinner, the better. All right, you just need a little coating. So there we go. Got all the wax on. Iron goes on and it moves at a pace to give a better wet. You want about two inches of wet behind the wax. Yeah, you want to have a wet section of wax behind that iron about two inches. Yeah, we're doing okay. So you want the iron uh, hot enough to melt the wax into the base, but not too hot. Now we got it. Not too hot to friggin' melt the friggin' base. Now I'm at about, yeah, now I'm about two inches of wet behind. I got a wet trail of about two inches. Is that two inches, guys? I tell my wife that's six inches. So once, I, once this is done, I'm gonna let this ski sit because you don't want to scrape it when it's hot. It's got to be back to room temperature before you scrape it. Because if you scrape it when it's hot, you're going to scrape a lot of the wax that's trying to get into the base on these open pores. You're going to just pull it out of those pores. You want that wax to sit in there. So you want it to cool back to room temperature. If that wax is now in the base. It's in the base, and uh, you're just going to scrape off what's left on top, which won't be very much, right? So I'm going to switch skis. So an important thing about waxing, it's kind of like skiing. It's a whole deal, right? Because it takes a good half hour if you have your bench all set up. When it's portable like this, it's a 45 minute job to an hour. So you might as well have a beer, have cool music, right? And enjoy the wax and think about your ski tomorrow. Okay, what do we do first? Let's use the hard bristle, mother. And rip this, rip the base. Get whatever's in and out, get a bit of structure. So if you had a rilling tool, rather than this, is you would rill them with these hard bristles that are very, it's really cool, it's on a track with wheels, and you pull them and you, and you push a structure into the ski. And the reason you need a structure, Grant, is 
and let the water, even when it's really cold, there's a, a micro layer of, of water, of actual liquid, not ice, but liquid. And you want that to have a path to go out, right? So that's why you do this. Now I'm gonna, a little brass brush, that'll kind of get into it, smooth it out a bit too. Pull all that wax out, right? And you want some weight on that. You're giving structure, keeping it's a living thing, this ski, right? So that's your best friend on the trails, a good wax ski. Use the scotch bright. get that wax off. Okay, this is 140. Let's see what happens. Right. Just a nice thin layer. Okay, we got a nice thin layer of wax on there. Yeah. Back in. That's what she said. This is the way it should go on, nice and easy. Let's iron that mofo in. And Grant, this is a real ski wax uh, iron. You can use a regular one. I did it for years before I, before I got my own real. The difference between a regular iron and this is this is flat. There's no holes in it for steam. Um, that's a big difference, and it looks cool. And, I, and you have a nice thermostat. Uh, you're gonna pay 120 bucks for one of these. You can get one at Neighbors. Oh, I got my trail's too long, which means I'm moving too slowly. Um, you can get one at Valley Village. Right? Ten, yeah, 10 bucks, just get a regular iron. It works, I did it for years, but then I got serious. Nice music in. This is uh, Milt Jackson of the Modern Jazz Quartet with Herbie Hancock on keyboards. Milt Jackson's playing the vibes. Uh, Ron Carter on bass, Billy Cobham on drums. Like it's a friggin' powerhouse of jazz in 19. I don't know, 1980 maybe, 1970. All right, this one's cool now, so we can go scrape that mofo. Let's scrape, now you're gonna scrape with a plastic scraper. You want it to be sharp enough to get the wax off, but there shouldn't be any wax, much, well, there's hardly any wax on the ski because of the crayon technique, right? <coughs> Never use a metal scraper when you're just scraping wax off. That's for repairs. And where is my scraper? Good question. Oh, there we go, motherfucker. Now you can sharpen a plastic scraper with a metal scraper, but you really need to in a vise. But I'll just get some of this. This might help a little bit. Yeah, this will sharpen the edge a little bit. So I'll use this edge here. You don't want it too sharp because then it scratches the base. You just want to get that little layer of wax on. All right, we're gonna use this edge here to scrape. Now I'm gonna use this. So we're using that edge, the flat edge there. And we're gonna use this for the Middle groove, plastic, not metal. So we just want to, we don't want any wax on the ski. It sounds funny if you've never waxed a ski before, but you don't want any wax on it. The wax is in it. Any wax on it is going to slow you down. Because what you want to slide on is a perfectly um, treated, is the wrong word, groomed base. Um, so now scraping. Now this, you can do nice multiple strokes. And you can just hear when there's no more wax on it, if you listen. And I'm gonna get the rest of the wax off there with my brush, with my brass brush. I'll go change the music. And we'll come back. We're back. So we scraped. Next, um, wanna get more wax out. We're not going to use the scotch bright yet. That will be second last. So we're going to go brass brush because it's a little colder than horsehair, which would be if it was above zero. There's my brass, baby. Nice kind of medium soft bristle. Look at that. Just grooming that base. Getting all that wax out of all those little structure holes. And then I'm just going to use the scotch bright, wipe that off. A little bit of pressure. And we're almost done with um, this stuff. It's a thin fabric, throwaway fabric. And you, that's your last, just to polish it up, get every little bit out of there. And you can use that for the whole ski. I'll put it in my pocket. The name will come to me soon. So brass brush, the rest of that wax off. 
Get it. Put, some, put something into it. Get more scotch break. That out. Find me your. Hmm. Something text. And now we're done. This ski's ready to fly tomorrow. Kick your fucking asses. Look, you can see from here, you can't see it. The structure looks great. You can see my structure, nice little pattern from the machine. It's opened up all that. And uh, this mofo's uh, ready to go. The Rosie skin, baby. Let's do this one. So what do we gotta do first? Scrape that mofo. Grooves in the hearts. Everything you want is tip to tail. You want to be as smooth as you can. You don't want to leave the little tiniest things that will take, you know, make you burn 1% more calories than you should have. I mean, that sounds like a bad thing. It just, it's not that. It's just that it slows you down. You want to use all your energy to go in as fast as you can. Like, you don't want to feel as if you're working. You want to get, you want to push yourself max, you know, maximum uh, beats per minute. But you want to do it effortless. Eff have fun doing it. Do it effortless. Effortless. And do it effortless. Effort effortless. I can't say it. How to do it with no effort. Brush. Scotch right next. What is the last procedure of waxing skis? Wipe them with a something like that. That's it, now we have a pair of skis ready to go to uh, go as fast as I possibly can. Humanly possible for me tomorrow morning will be with this ski.